Hey guys, this is Tim, and as promised, I'm going to be reviewing the Blue Box Toys A10 Thunderbolt, and what a magnificent 118 scale model this is, and it's perfect for G.I. Joe display. It's a really great airplane. Um, it does have sound, but I did not replace the batteries yet. I probably should do that soon. Um, well, let's go over this a little bit. But first, I wanted to show you this I picked up. I found, uh, remember the old rubber band planes that I played with when I was a kid? This is from 1970. I think it's a remake, though. But this is the P-51D North American Mustang, the World War II USAF fighter and bomber escort. And... It's a model kit, balsa wood kit, and uh, that's it right there. Um, pretty cool I picked this up. Um, I just remember as a kid, uh, after I would go to the doctor's office, my mom would stop by the hobby store and let me pick out something from the hobby store. And these were only, they, these were really cheap. You know, they were probably maybe 79 cents or something at the time. But I would always go for one of these rubber band planes because I would just spend hours putting them together and flying them in the backyard. But uh, this was a pretty neat find. But uh, we'll be going over that later. So I'm going to move this out of the way and we're going to get to the A-10 Thunderbolt. First, a little history about it. The A-10 Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt 2 is a single seat twin turbo fan engine straight wing jet aircraft developed by fairchild republic for the united states air force usaf it's commonly referred to by the nicknames warthog or hog although the a-10's official name comes from the republic p-47 thunderbolt a world war ii fighter bomber effective at attacking ground targets the a-10 was designed for close air support of friendly ground troops attacking armored vehicles and tanks and providing quick action support against enemy ground forces it it's a tank buster man i mean these things are used still today as really effective in uh helping ground forces and uh it entered service in 1976 and is the only production built aircraft that has served in the usaf that has that was designed solely for close air support its secondary mission is to provide a forward air controller airborne support by directing other aircraft in attacks on ground targets. The aircraft used primarily in this role are designated an OA-10. Uh, this is the A-10, but uh, Thunderbolt 2, it's a single-seater. Now, they did mess around with a two-seater but uh, it was made, like I said, again by Fairchild Republic. Uh, its first flight was the 10th of May, 1972. That's like 47 or 48 years ago. Introduction was October of 1977. It's still in service uh, because it's such a great plane for close air support. And the United States Air Force is the primary user of it. Um, there was 716 of them built. Uh, they cost about 18.8 million, um, which is about 46.3 million today. Now, A-10 was intended to improve on the performance of the A-1 Sky Raider and its lesser firepower. The A-10 was designed around the 30 millimeter GAU-8 Avenger rotary cannon. And what a bad mother that is. I mean, I've seen some of the videos of this in action. And if you haven't seen one, they are devastating. I mean, and I mean, it just pulverizes tanks <laughs> and any kind of ground troops. And this thing is one bad mother. And uh, its airframe was designed for durability with, with, uh, with measures such as 1,200 pounds, 540 kilograms of titanium armor to protect the cockpit and aircraft systems, enabling it to absorb a significant amount of damage and continue flying. 
Its short takeoff and landing capability permits operation from airstrips close to the front lines, and its simple design enables maintenance with minimal facilities. The A-10 served in the Gulf War, Operation Desert Storm, the American-led intervention against Iraq's invasion of Kuwait, where the A-10 distinguished itself. The A-10 also participated in other conflicts, such as Grenada, the Balkans, Afghanistan, Iraq, and against Islamic State in the Middle East. The A-10A single-seat variant was the only version produced, though one pre-production airframe was modified into the YA-10B twin-seat prototype to test an all-weather night-capable version. In 2005, a program was started to upgrade the remaining A-10A aircraft to the A-10C configuration with modern avionics for use with precision weaponry. The U.S. Air Force had stated the F-35 would replace the A-10 as it entered service, but this remains highly contentious within the USAF and its political circles. With a variety of upgrades and wing replacements, the A-10 service life can be extended to 2040. The service has no planned retirement date as of June 2017. And uh, uh, we'll go over some of the specifications here. Um, If I can, if I can get to it. Oops. Yeah, here we go. Oh, this thing's jumping around. There we go. Okay. Like I said, the uh, GAU-8 Avenger Cannon, which is located up the front. Now, this is painted up like the shark. I did decal this myself and put this together. It came, these wings do come off. Um, let's take a look at this baby. This is the Shark 5. There is your Air Command, Strategic Air Command lettering here. Uh, there's your twin fan engines here. Um, I have not customized this at all other than with the decals that it came with. Um, I may do that. I may do some scuffing and things like that later. But I have not planned to do that um, as of yet because I just like it the way it is. Um, we're going to take a look at the armament and some of the play features on this in just a moment. But let's go over some of the specifications. It has a pave penny pod on the pylon. And the crew is one. There is just one pilot. And this is the pilot that came with it. Although you can use G.I. Joe figures. Um, this is the pilot that came with it. Um, and he looks pretty good. I mean, I could do some customizing on that, but he looks just fine. Um, all you need is one pilot anyway. Um, the length of it was 53 feet 4 inches, and the wingspan was 57 foot 6 inches. The height is 14 feet 8 inches. The wing area is 506 feet by 47 M squared is what they got, so meters squared. Now the air fail, airfoil is NACA 6716 root and a NACA 6713 tip. Empty weight is 24,959 pounds. Loaded weight is 30,384 pounds. Uh, Anti-armor mission would be uh, 42,000 uh, when it's fully loaded. Capacity is going to be 47,000, almost 48,000 pounds. Maximum takeoff weight is 50,000 pounds, so they keep it under that. The internal fuel capacity is 11,000 pounds. The power plant is two General Electric TF-34 GE 100A turbofans. And they are 9,065 pounds of thrust each. The performance never exceeds speed is 450 knots or 518 miles per hour at 5,000 feet. And maximum speed is 381 knots or 439 miles per hour at sea level. That's clean Cruise speed is 300 knots or 340 miles per hour. Stall speed is 120 knots or 138 miles per hour. Um, 
so we can go into the armament now. The guns is a 130 millimeter 1.18 GAU 8A Avenger rotary cannon with 1,174 rounds. And I mean, it spits those out in seconds. And uh, that all, that's all of the, that's all it needs on the front. But it does have rockets. Uh, it's got hard points, uh, 11 8 by underwing and 3 under fuselage pylon stations with a capacity of 16,000 pounds uh, and provisions to carry combinations of 4 rockets, which are the LAU-61 and LAU-68 rocket pods, and each with 19 by 7 by Hydra 70 millimeter APKWS rockets, respectively, or six LAU 131 rocket pods, each with seven Hydra 70 rockets. And then you have missiles, which will take two AIM AIM 9 Sidewinder air to air missiles for self defense and six AGM 65 Maverick air to surface missiles. The bombs are Mark 80 series of unguided iron bombs or MK-77 incendiary bombs or Blue 1, Blue 27B, CBU-20 Rock I-2, BL-755, and CBU-52, 58, 71, 87, 89, and 97 cluster bombs or Paveway series of laser-guided bombs or Joint Direct Attack Munitions JDAM A10Cs or wind corrected munitions dispenser A10C. Now, others you can uh, deploy flares, infrared decoys, and chaff dispensers, and ALQ 131 or ALQ 184 ECM pods, and also a Lockheed Martin Sniper XR or Lightning Target pods A10Cs or Two 600 U.S. Gal 2300 L Sergeant Fletcher drop tanks for increased range. So it does say you can carry tanks on it. So let's take a look at this thing here. As you can see, we're gonna I'm going to flip the bottom here in a second. But we're, let's take a look at the cockpit. I'm going to take out the pilot so we can see inside the cockpit. See what kind of detail we have. And there is the cockpit there. As you can see, it does have a really nice detail on the cockpit. They did a really nice job with all the buttons and the color, all the infrared dials, the stick, and the seats with the ejection pod there. And as you can see, it's got on, on both sides um, one pilot. It does have one windscreen in the front and the back here. And as we move along here, this can be pressed in to drop stuff, but this it has a uh, a play feature which features this targeting sight, which uh, you can press that and it'll make noise in a red thing. This is where you keep the batteries there. This uh, LED does light up. This is another feature here where you can shoot the guns. Um, I don't have any batteries in it right now. Um, I, when I store these or display them i don't keep batteries in them because i don't want them leaking but uh i should have put some in just for uh, so you guys could hear what it sounds like i may still do that but let's take a look at it from the front it is a pretty good size plane as you can see we have uh here's a regular size gi joe the vintage size gi joe right here next to it and uh, as you can see, it is very cool, very in scale. Um, this is a four inch figure that it came with, so it will fit the modern figures. Ace will fly that or any other G.I. Joe pilot you have. So this is a four inch figure here and he is to scale. It's a very good displayable uh, plane. Um, like I says, from Blue Box. Um, I think I bought it probably around seven or eight years ago, and I've had it. I've never seen another one like it. Um, I think I was lucky to find it. I think I found it at a Target. Now, underneath, you can see we have the, uh, there's your, your missiles here and your bombs. The, uh, 
me see if I can get this to stay. This feature here will, uh, you can, you can uh, move the uh, landing gear in and out. It does have a trigger that flips out so you can drop bombs, shoot your gun, and you also have some, you can pull this back and fire missiles out the front too for pretend play as using the cannon. You've got your switch back here. There is your blue box toys. 2000, what does that say? 2003 it was put out. So this is 17 years old. Or 2000, yeah, it's 2000. Three, I believe it says. It sure is. So this is a quite a decent find for me when I found it. I'm pretty excited about it. It'd be a great plane to customize, but uh, these bombs will drop. You have um, these triggers on the back. Let me flip this back over and pop this back down. We'll flip this back over. And these buttons here on the back, as you can see right here, you press those in and you can drop bombs. And then they clip right back in. Um, it has a lot of play features on it. But uh, what a really nice A-10. And there's the full view of that right here. And like I said, Ace will fit into this really good. And... Uh, that's about all I have for you here now. This is the A-10 Thunderbolt. And for close air, or close ground support. Um, and they are still in action. I love the decals on this. It looks like the shark. There's the, uh, the Air Force decal on the side there. And there's the wingspan. Like I said, for easy storage, these wings do pop off. Um... The back does not, so just these parts right here, you can pull this off and pull the other one off so you can put it in a streamlined, more streamlined box for storage. But uh, I really like this plane a lot. It's one of my my favorite planes that I have right now besides a Sky Striker, and it looks really good next to a Sky Striker or even next to some of the Cobra planes, um, jets actually the night ravens but uh what a great tank buster this this thing is and uh there's the full view i may paint this up and camouflage it um if i find a good model to go after and maybe modify it maybe do some silver first as a base uh a light silver base and then maybe go with the uh kind of a tan and green with some uh, heavy scratches on it so you can see the silver underneath it which uh, might be a good idea of course i'd have to get all new uh, decals and things like that if i was to do that but uh, i really enjoy having this plane and uh, if you can find one um, definitely pick one up um, i believe when i bought it i think i might have paid maybe 30 something dollars for it like I said, I got it probably at least 10 years ago, 7 or 10 years ago, and it was at a Target when we still had a Target here in my area. But uh, that is your A-10 Thunderbolt. So we'll see you again next time, guys, and uh, happy collecting and good night.